So highlighting your Bible with a lot of different colors can be really fun and it can be very useful as well because it helps you just kind of like orient you where the passage is at. But what do you do if all of a sudden you come across a passage and you have no idea how to highlight it? Do you just skip over it or do you give it a whirl? Well, in this video, I'm going to attempt to highlight a really odd little quirky passage in 1 John and let's see what I come up with. So in my last video, I did a little Bible study. And in that Bible study, we covered a passage in 1 John. And it kind of got me thinking that, you know, there's a portion of 1 John which I haven't highlighted at all. So I thought, well, let's take a look at it. And I came upon a passage that's always kind of, um, I wouldn't say confused me, but I've always thought it was an odd little passage in 1 John 2, where he greets the little children, the young men, and the fathers. And he does it twice. And it's really strange. And so what we're going to do today is we are going to highlight 1 John 2, um, 1 through I think maybe 14. I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see what I'm doing. And we're just going to work through it and uh, see what we come up with. Also, before I turn my camera around and we get this started, I just want to mention that I have a new group starting on October 1st, 2024. Pre-registration is open. It's called Pathfinders Fellowship. And on a monthly basis, we're going to be doing these highlighting videos because um, a lot of people have questions about, you know, how to do this. And actually, I think it's a lot more helpful than what some people realize. I almost always get into list making when I'm highlighting. I'm not going to do that probably in this video, but... You know, highlighting is kind of like the first stage of my Bible study. So we're going to be doing that on a monthly basis. So if you like these highlighting videos, check the link down below to go check out that group. It launches on October 1st. All right, let's get to it. So we're using these um, these new highlighters here from Mr. Pin. And my color code is blue is for the attributes of God characteristics of God. This reddish kind of color is, my fingernail is dirty. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this uh, pink or reddish color here is for commands or directives. This orange one is for warnings. The green one is for promises. And this purple one is for identity. So this is what we're using today. So we're just going to work through 1 John 2 through 14. And 15 is where I did that other video where we did some study on that. So you can check that out. But anyway, let's just go ahead and read this over and see what we can find. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin... We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. That's kind of a promise. I like that. If anyone does sin. This green um, is my least favorite color in this collection because it's really light. So I kind of like to go over it twice. It bleeds a little bit when you go over it twice. Probably more than I would like, but I'm used to those uh, wax uh, gel pens and they bled way more than that. Anyway, back to this. Um, so yeah, I feel like that that's a promise. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus. So we don't need to, you know, really get into that hyper focus where we're, we don't need to like a slip into the law, right? Where we're, you know, always trying to, to, do better thinking that we have to repent like every single second. Um, we don't want to walk in sin, but we do have this advocate, Jesus. Amen. So he is a pr propitiation for our sins. That's a big word. Propitiation for our sins. Let's look up propitiation. I'll be right back. Okay, so propitiation means the act of appeasing wrath. 
So that's what Jesus does for us. Is he appeases the wrath of God concerning our sins. I've heard that a lot and I kind of knew what it meant, but not exactly. So that's helpful. So he's a propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. That's kind of a promise. We can know, by this we know, we can know that we've come to know him. How? If we keep his commandments. So this is my um, color for commands or directives. Whoever says I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. So that's a warning. Does not keep his commandments is a liar. Whoever says truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. I love that. The love of God is perfect, perfected. And I kind of feel like it's God perfecting that love, like not us, but the love of God is perfect, perfected. It's also um, a promise, but I'm just going to leave it like that. I could, you know, if I wanted to like just do like green right here for promise. Just kind of bracketing that off. By this, we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. One of the things that I don't like about the ESV, and I got used to this in the New King James Version, is that he, him, his, whenever talking about God or Jesus is not ever capitalized. They say that the reason why they didn't capitalize it is because in the original writings and the original scrolls, they never were capitalized. So... But it is kind of helpful in some of the other translations when they do that. But in which he walked, meaning Jesus, because Jesus was the one that walked. By this we know that we are, are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. And, you know, when we do these, so that's like just a reminder that that's what we're supposed to be doing. When we do these highlighting highlightings, we don't have to highlight absolutely everything. Um, but you know, when I do these videos, I, I highlight a fair amount just to kind of let you know how I process the information. The new commandment, beloved, I am writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. At the same time, it is a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. That's a promise that we need to remember. It can be really easy in today's modern world to focus so heavily on all the bad stuff that's happening and all the darkness that's out there. But we really, as Christians, we really need to focus on the true light that's already shining. Jesus already came. He gave us the Holy Spirit. We are now shining. We are the light of the world. Jesus shines through us. And so we really do need to focus on that. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Mm. hates his brother. I think this, what this means, hates his brother, talking about brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh my goodness. I highlighted this the wrong color, y'all. Boy, you're getting me in the real raw here. <laughs> I highlighted this the wrong color. So what do you do when you make a mistake? You highlight the wrong color. Yeah, just fix it. <laughs> Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going. So when you hate, so hatred causes you to walk in the darkness, and then you lose your way, right? I'm going to make a few notes here. 
doesn't know where he's going, you lose your way. Now, here is the passage that is so odd. It's this little passage right here, and it takes us to <laughs> the end. And this is a passage that I've always thought this passage was so kind of strange. And you can see right here that the way that the ESV formatted it, they almost formatted it like a, po like a poem um, or poetry, like they would like, like in the Psalms. So it's almost like he wrote this little poem he says, I am writing to you, little children. So now he's like greeting them. He's like greeting them like in the middle of like, he, he wrote all this stuff and now he's finally kind of greeting them. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. Now, I've always thought that just, you know, my little organizational brain that it should go like children to, to, um, young men, to fathers. But then the strange thing is he repeats it, changes things up a little bit, but he repeats it again. I write to you little, I write to you children. First it was little children. Now it's children because you know, the father, I write to you fathers because you know him who was from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the world, the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. So he repeats it and just changes a couple of little different nuances. So this is a really strange passage to me. And I'm going to be perfectly honest. When I was kind of looking at this, this whole chapter here to do a highlighting video on, I kind of looked in a commentary because I was like, this is a little odd. And the commentary I looked in too was the um, Believer's Bible commentary. Um, I've done a, a review on that. Go check it out. I'll link, down, link to it down below. And basically what he's talking about are series of maturity. So we start out as little children, right? And then um, eventually when we go, in, go into full maturity, then we're like fathers and then like midway through when we're really coming into our strength, we're like young men and we're able to like really, now we're starting to learn how to really fight with the power of God. And so these are kind of actually identity statements. So this is how I am going to highlight this passage as if these are identity statements. However, the question then is where am I in this stage here? Am, am I still a child? Have I reached full maturity? Or am I like more like a young adult, just like really learning how to fight? I'll be perfectly honest. I don't think any of us reach full maturity, but this is how I'm going to do this. I'm going to highlight these and then I'm going to kind of do like a subset highlight using just like a pen um, to kind of differentiate these. So I write to you little children. And then I'm writing to you fathers. And then I'm writing to you young men. I'm writing to you children, which is kind of the same as little children, but not. I write to you fathers. I write to you young men. Okay, now, those are identities, identity statements. We're always in that phase somewhere of maturity. So little children, what happens when you first get saved? Because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. Amen. Now we can call these identity statements and maybe we will. Um, your sins are forgiven. So that's really important when you first become a Christian that you have to understand that your sins are forgiven. Now in full maturity, why are you in full maturity? Because you know him who is from the beginning. We're gonna get into this a little bit. And then young men, why young men? Because you have overcome the evil one. You're learning how to fight now, right? I'm writing to you children. Now you've matured a little bit more. 
And now, not only do you know that your sins are forgiven, but now you know God as your father. I write to you fathers, and it doesn't change. See, in the first time it said, because you know him who is from the beginning. Because you know him who is from the beginning. It's the same. So in other words, you've reached a place of stability, right? And we're going to talk about, we're going to, I'm going to break these down a little bit. And then I write to you young men. What was the first one? Because, uh, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. Now it says, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. So these are, are all identity statements. So why do I call these identity statements? Because it's important that we realize that this is who we are. That I am, like if, if you're brand, a brand new Christian, you just got saved, you have to realize that you are someone who, who has had your sins forgiven. Um, you don't, I wouldn't necessarily call this a promise because these are things that have already happened, um, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just grab a pen here, any color. It doesn't matter what color I'm using. So little, little children, I'm going to box this off in red. And then I'm going to box off the other children passage in red. So let's talk about this. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. That's the first thing that you know. That's the first thing. That's the first thing that you ask for. <laughs> like, Lord, please forgive my sins, right? But then when you've matured a little bit, now you don't have little. So this word little kind of indicates just a baby Christian, you know, somebody who just got saved. But now you've matured a little bit more. And because you've matured a little bit more, you know the Father. So now it's not just about, you know, you getting your sins forgiven. Now it's you have a relationship with the Father. Isn't that awesome? Yes, my handwriting is bad. <laughs> okay, now let's use a different color. Um, now, I am writing to you fathers. So it's the same. It's the same here. It doesn't change. So why does it not change? I think... This is my personal opinion. It doesn't change because you've reached stability. Father statement. Doesn't change because stability has been achieved. Now, it's not just that. Let's look at the statement because you know him who is from the beginning. You know him who is from the beginning. To me, that kind of just means like you understand the full scope of the story. You understand that we started out as Adam and that there was a fall, but that Adam knew God intimately before the fall and that ultimately you know, we're going to be redeemed back and we are going to be in the manifest presence of the Lord again. And that is our promise, right? And so we've known from the beginning, we know from the beginning to the end now, we're mature. We know the fullness of the gospel and the fullness of the promise. And we don't, when I say we know the fullness, I don't mean that we know everything in that kind of maturity, but we just know the fullness of the whole story of the gospel. And you have to go all the way back to Genesis for that and all the way to the end of Revelation for that. And so when you reach maturity, you have a fuller grasp of the word of God. And, and I feel like all of us are kind of like, 
we probably kind of like ebb and flow in between these as we learn more and more and more because on on this side of heaven we're never going to know everything 100 percent perfectly right so we're always kind of growing um so we kind of ebb and flow through all of these but that's kind of what i think father is kind of about now let's move to um young men let's pick a color that'll contrast let's pick this green I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. Okay, so, you know, young men could be young women, too. So, you know, this is very masculine language, but, you know, it's for all believers. Um, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. So we've matured now, right, from children. Where's our second children? Right here. From children, because you know the father. So we have intimacy with the father. And now, because we have intimacy with the Father, now we're starting to move into power. We're starting to move into um, really the uh, the Christian life of you know overcoming the world. Um, over here in in verse fifteen, he talks about um, overcoming the world. Uh, do not love the things in the world. So. And that was like the basis of that whole study that I did in my last video was overcoming the world. Um, but so now you have overcome the evil one. And so you've, you've reached greater maturity. You're walking in more victory here. Um, I'm just going to say walking in victory. Right. But now, when we go to this last part, I write to you, young men, because you're strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome evil again. And so, again, it's we're, now we're getting stronger and stronger. You know, here... You have overcome the evil one. That's the first step. That's like, you know, when Jesus says, get me, you know, be gone, Satan. Um, you know, that's how you, you rebuke Satan. And so we've gotten to a point where it's like we recognize the evil one and we rebuke him <laughs> when, when we recognize him, right? And so that is we're reaching greater maturity here. But then even greater maturity here because now we're getting stronger in being able to do that on a regular basis and the word of God abides in you. And so now you're abiding. I'm so messy when I write in my Bible. <laughs> um, so an interesting, I did a little video on this, just a little short video on this, something that my uh, pastor came up with was an acronym for abide. I'll write it up here for you. Abide. A B I D E. Always be in direct engagement. That's abiding. Um, so it's, you know, a little O C D period there. <laughs> and so that is abiding in God. And so we're getting stronger and now we're abiding. And yeah, because we've overcome the evil one. So you have overcome the evil one. You have over. The, yep, they're both. They're both um, past tense. Like you have overcome the evil one. Those are also like promises too. This whole entire thing. If you're like at a little child right here, this whole entire thing could be a promise for you. You know, if if you're still growing, you know, then 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 this this state of being more like like being fully mature, that could be a promise to you as well. So that is all I wanted to cover there. I wanted to tackle this little quirky thing that, that John does here. It's always like puzzled me a little bit. I did look in the, the, um, believers Bible commentary just to understand really what I pretty much all I got from that is that these are different states of maturity. And from there, I just kind of came in and what you're seeing here is me just kind of like working through this in real time. This is way my, the way my brain works. So that is it. I see these as identity statements. 
and I see each one of these descriptions of those as identity statements. Have I reached the full maturity? I don't think so. We're all on a journey. I I definitely have not reached full maturity. But, you know, the more I get into the word, the more I spend with God, the more I pray, the more I uh, just spend sitting with him. Um, yeah, I mean, we're maturing. We're growing. Always, always growing. Isn't that fantastic? Okay, so hopefully that helped you kind of work through that passage. I hope it was a blessing for you. Um, just kind of my brain in real time. So like I said, we're going to be doing regular Bible highlighting and kind of working through passages like that. Just real quick studies like that on a monthly basis in my Pathfinders group. We're going to be doing a lot more than that as well. So again, link is should be up above and also down in the description. Thank you so much for hanging with me as I work through this passage and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.